Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn around to somebody on this good Friday evening and tell them you have already overcome. God bless you. You may be seated. Man, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to Good Friday service at Grace. Yeah. On behalf of the pastoral team, on behalf of the Grace team, on behalf of Grace to everyone here tonight, if you're a visitor or a friend, we say welcome. We're glad to have you for Good Friday service. Come on, Grace. Let's welcome them. Everyone online, we welcome you. We're glad to have you. And we encourage you now that I'm going to conclude. We're going to have communion together as a church family. So uh, wherever you are, if you're watching right now, grab some crackers, grab some grape juice, something stronger if you need it, whatever it is, and we will together commune shortly. I know what we've got in the room here. No designated drivers needed here. We are uh, obviously flowing a touch different tonight. I want to go ahead and, and share what's on my heart before we go into communion. And then we're going to end again with that and a, a touch more of worship. But I want to thank you for coming. I do encourage you, remember Sunday, Resurrection Day, 9, 11, and 1230 here. Come to one, come to two, work one, worship one, help us as we go after souls on Easter Sunday. Actually going after souls tonight as well. Spoiler alert, he came to set the captive free. Amen. Now my assignment tonight is not easy. It's not easy because, well, Sunday's going to be fantastic because Sunday is resurrection day. Last Sunday was fantastic because that's Palm Sunday, the Parade of the Lambs, so we celebrate that as well. But this, this tonight, we call it Good Friday, but candidly, there's not a lot of good in Good Friday. Perhaps a better title would be Black Friday because uh, it was dark, very dark. Sin, hell just seemed to overcome as we have just sung about what Jesus did but it seemed that way for anyone who was a follower or around and I, I know retailers like Black Friday to be the Friday after Thanksgiving but tonight really it could be called Black Friday maybe we should call it Red Friday because there was well, there was a lot of blood there are a lot of red faces it, it could be called Red Friday but we we call it good, we call it good because we know, we know the rest of the story. Today is violent. Today is not rated PG. Today is, is the worst day and yet the best day of what we call Holy Week. Today is the day that reveals a lot about people. It reveals a lot about us, but it revealed a lot about, think about this. He had 12 disciples, and this day revealed that one was a devil. Um, the other nine slinked away into darkness. One cursed and stormed out in a fit. One remained out of the 12 on this day. It's not really a good Friday when it comes to saying, I'm a disciple of Christ. On the other hand, one thing that makes it good is some of the most unlikely people did rise to the occasion. Mary Magdalene, a woman that had a, she was very, matter of fact, we know she was possessed by at least seven spirits and had quite a reputation, and yet she takes the lead on Easter weekend. Or there's Simon of Cyrene, who was just, he was literally passing through. He was, he was on a trip, he had his kids with him, and he is pulled into carrying the cross of Jesus. 
Even Nicodemus, I, I like to call him Nick at night because he's the one who came to Jesus at night and said, let's talk about this whole thing about being born again. And, and, and then he, he snuck back into the darkness and remained that way. But on this day, he stands tall for the burial of Jesus. So Good Friday does pull a lot of good out of some people. Easter reveals a lot about a lot. It reveals what's in me, what's in you. This week does, Holy Week. In revealing things about ourselves, I'm going to tell you something about me, that confession is good for the soul, but I am a borrower. I borrow things. I don't think I'm cheap. I think I'm resourceful. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago that Spencer and I were going to go quail hunting, and it was the first time we'd gone together. I had a shotgun, but there's two of us. I figured quail hunting, sharing a shotgun wouldn't be good. So I borrowed one from a man of grace here at this campus just to test drive and make sure this is something we would do together. Growing up as the youngest of three kids, I wore a lot of borrowed clothes, or as we would call them, hand-me-downs. I literally had some shirts, because in those days, it was pretty, pretty cool to have your name stuck on the back of it, and I've worn shirts that said Brett. It was tough, though, especially if it said Patty. But I wore borrowed clothes, hand-me-downs. Speaking of that and parenting, I wish as a parent we could borrow things. Maybe like a lending library. I'm talking about for all those whims your child gets. I'm talking about you people over here. When the student, when the child just knows, Dad, please, I must, must, I want to play the flute. The trombone is just my life. Please, please. Uh, I want to go all in on this sport, which means we've got to buy every. A lending library would be very good for parents when your child is just saying, please, daddy, please, this is an item I've got to have or I'll die. And then they're going to discard it. If we could just borrow. I, now, I, I saw them yesterday. I've got a left-handed guitar that belongs to someone. I've got a right-handed guitar that belongs to someone else. I've got a ukulele that belongs to someone who's in Alabama. Right? I've, all these things that we have to have, we should have just borrowed. Because that spell got over pretty quick, and we've moved on. Here's a hint for successful borrowing, return it better than it was when you got it. Yeah. Clean the golf clubs, then return them. Make sure the tank is full. Yeah. Trying to help somebody tonight, set you free. The gentleman who loaned me the shotgun told me later after I cleaned it, he said, it's better now than it was when I loaned it to you. That's the idea because you never know what I'm going to ask for next. <laughs> Some things I figure I only need once or I want to try it out. So borrowing it makes sense. I have literally borrowed pickup trucks to drive to see, am I a pickup truck guy? And I like sitting up high. I like being able to put, I've borrowed Pastor Mike's. I've borrowed Pastor Blake's. I've borrowed my brother's. I, I like it for a minute. But that's not me. Now, I, I've talked about kids, but let's talk about the big boy toys that you just had to have that's now drawing dust and sitting in the garage or something. Oh, I feel conviction in the room now because you, I had, if we could have just borrowed it and moved on. Several years ago, we were trying to decide if we were camping, fishing kind of guys, myself and Spence. So we went to the protected boundary waters, and that first year, we borrowed a tent. And 
mats to sleep on. We Actually, we borrowed everything except rod and reel and clothes. And the tent was mismatched with poles that came from this one and it mixed with that one. But now we know we do like that. We kind of dig that scene. So now, she's here. We own more gear than we want mom to know about. We've spent more than she ever needs to know. Matter of fact, we're contemplating a two-story tent now just to kind of... But I, I borrowed it first just to see. I'm saying that because you also need to know that it makes sense to keep in mind, and I don't like to be a borrower when it comes to money. Now I'm talking dollars and cents. Yes, we have a mortgage. I'm, I don't want to act like I have no debt. But, but, but the thing you've got to understand is Solomon, so wise words from a wise guy, said in Proverbs 22, 7, just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. And I know Freddie Furniture is screaming at you that you don't have to pay a dollar down for three years. No interest, no payment. Have I lost my mind? Be a wise borrower. Get, borrow some binoculars and read the small print. Pay it off before the first payment is due because it is accumulating interest. Nothing's free in this world except salvation. Actually, that wasn't free. It's just been paid for. Jesus did some borrowing too. The promise of his birth foretold, without room in the inn, born in Bethlehem, they borrowed a manger. Didn't even have their own. We sing it, there was no place for him to lay his head. Borrowed a manger. But the angel was still declaring, this borrower, he will save his people from their sins. You remember one time, he borrowed a, a guy's boat. I, I've not had the, the courage on that one yet. <laughs> but he's, he borrowed a boat. And it, it appears to be at the time a guy he really didn't know. He got to know him later. His name was Simon Peter, but... Luke 5, 1 says, One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. I, I could do that preach from a boat why don't any of you ever offer to let me borrow <laughs> when he had finished speaking he said to Simon now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets and catch some fish Peter comes out on the good end of the deal he loaned his boat but then Jesus said let's go out deeper and now commercial fisherman, you're going to catch, you're going to make a profit because you helped the profit. It's always nice when someone returns what they borrowed and then you get a little something in return. So the car had a half tank and you give it back with a full tank. I've come out, especially today in prices, I've come out pretty good. If Jesus borrows from you, Rest assured, he'll bless you for it. He will bless you for it. He, he wasn't just speaking braggadociously. He was speaking truth when he declared in Revelation 21, Behold, I make all things new. Matter of fact, he went on and said, Write, for these words are true and faithful. If you're going to loan anything to anybody, loan it to Jesus because he makes all things new. 
So you, you loan him your old trash heap of a jalopy with three wheels and a Band-Aid on the fourth, and he'll give you something new in return. You want to loan your stuff to Jesus. Remember the day he borrowed a donkey? Matthew 21, when they drew near Jerusalem and came up to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying, go into the village opposite you and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything, because this could look like Grand Theft Donkey. <laughs> so if anyone says anything to you, just say the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. I don't know how he knew immediately, they, except maybe they knew if you loan to him, you get it back better. He, he borrowed the donkey. If anyone asks, tell him I need it. Can I just tell you, I am that donkey. I'm, I'm cleaning up my language here, but that's me. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, just call me Jack. <laughs> when I tell you that's me, it's because I was, I was like, I was tied up at an opposite place. I was at a junction where two ways meet, wasn't sure what to do, totally tied down, and then Jesus, I'm so glad he is a borrower because he took me and he made something out of me, something beautiful, because he does make all things new. He kept going the rest of the way up that hill, then he comes to a garden. And the rest of that night is a blur. It started with prayer and then betrayal, arrested, a kangaroo court. The whole system was rigged. He was a dead man walking. Then he is beaten. He is whipped with 39 stripes on his back, a, a crown. This is what we call Good Friday. A crown of thorns on his head, stripped naked, forced to carry his own cross, a a horrible form of, of torture to take the device of execution and make the one who's going to be executed to carry it. He was black, it was blue, it was red, it was everything but a good Friday, except for us, it was good. While he's hanging on the cross, he, he, he borrows John and says, my own family's not here. My siblings have, are not even here. Could I borrow you to take care of mama? Just, just treat her like she's your mother. Mom, treat him like he's your son. And then he, he borrows one more breath, and he just declares, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he dies. But even then, he wasn't done borrowing. Jesus borrowed the tomb he was buried in. Here's the thing about borrowers. They know they won't need it for long. They know it's temporary, so why go all in and buy, just borrow it? Jesus had his own resurrection plan. He had declared in John 2, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. In fact, he is alive now. He has overcome. In fact, he only borrowed death. He just used it for a little bit so that you and I could live and have life eternal and life abundant. And he went through Friday so that you and I could have resurrection Sunday. And the story of Friday actually is really good for a lot of reasons. And Sunday's empty tomb will be phenomenal for a lot of reasons. God is trying to get you from good to great. 
He's trying to get you where he sees that you were meant to be in the first place, but you've not been borrowed, you've been stolen, taken. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But thank God Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full, and he is the ultimate borrower who said, I, if I could just use your tomb for a little bit. I'm going to tell you right now at Brookside, they, they don't have a lending program. Rosewood is an awesome company, but they, they don't have a lender's library for tombs because it's usually permanent, but Jesus borrowed it. And I will tell you, I guess once a borrower, always a borrower. He wants to borrow you. He wants to use you to be in his image, to spread the news, to let others know about the one who came, lived, died, rose again so that we can live a full life. He wants to borrow your life. He wants you to carry his spirit, his message of hope. He, Paul said, I'm going to present my body to him as a living sacrifice. In other words, Lord, you can borrow me. What about you tonight on Good Friday? Are, are, you, are you ready and willing to say, since you, since you were willing to, I just want to borrow, you can borrow me. Use me, Lord. Work through me. There's a reward? Yes. He will pay. He will repay. And whatever you give him, he gives back to you better than it originally was. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. How many of you are thankful for the borrower? And he's here tonight. And he's looking for anyone who says, use me. Live in me. If you're going to live anywhere, don't, don't, you don't have to knock on my neighbor's door. Come, come knock on my door. I'll let you in. You can borrow my life. That's what makes Friday so good. That's what makes it so wonderful. Is that while we were still sinners, he died for us. Someone here. On Good Friday, I, I just want to tell you, I wouldn't wait till Resurrection Sunday if you could live now. There were those that on Friday got a revelation of who he was. And they didn't have to wait till Sunday. The centurion recognized that surely this is. I get it now. The Son of God. This is him. Before we partake of his body. And partake of the fruit of the vine that represents the blood that on Good Friday was broken for us and shed for us. I want to give someone the chance to just go ahead now and say, if you can use anything, Lord, use me. If you're going to live anywhere, Lord, live in me. I want to ask you to close your eyes, if you would, and just, just allow the privacy of an audience well, I was going to say of two, just me and the Lord, but scripture, say, scripture says all of heaven is watching, waiting to rejoice over the one who repents. So you're here on Good Friday, but if you would just say to me and the Lord, all eyes are closed. Heaven is watching. If you'd say, you know what? I don't need to wait till Easter Sunday. I need the power of Friday and the resurrection on Sunday. Now, I need Jesus. I wonder if you just just lift your hand real quick. Just let me let me see. Yeah, I see you in the, I see you on the floor. I, I see you in the risers. I see the hand. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for your candor. If you're online, you can you can literally click online and and virtually raise your hand, saying, "Yeah, that's that's me." Would you do me the honor and the privilege of allowing me to connect you with Jesus? Now, 
He's actually the door to the Father. He's, he's the way to salvation. But I, I just want to be a, a guide and get you there. I'm asking everyone in the room, if you would, just borrow my words and pray this after me. Jesus, I believe. That's actually enough said. Come on, say that. That's actually enough said. I believe. You are the Son of God, and you died for my sins. I don't deserve it, but I receive it tonight. Save me, fill me, use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, I declare you are my Lord and my Savior. Amen. That means so be it. Now listen. Heaven is watching. We're rejoicing with heaven. I want to ask you, perhaps you raised your hand a while ago, if you were one of the ones that would say tonight, Good Friday, not waiting till Sunday, I just gave my life to Christ. It's on loan to him. He'll return it better than it was. If that's you tonight, we would like to celebrate with you. I'm asking you just to lift your hand real quick and let us, let us enjoy a little good on Good Friday today. Yeah, come on, Grace. This is why he did what he did. This is why he came, to set the captives free. Every one of you that lifted your hands, our ushers are coming. If they missed you, make sure they see you. They want to gift you a, a next step book. Just gives you a little next step of what you can do. Not, not to obligate you to grace, but to tie you into the kingdom of God. Of course, you're very welcome at grace. We're, we're just donkeys and people that have, we're just loaning ourselves to God for as long as he needs us. We'd love to have you here. Lord, I thank you for what you've done in just that moment. I thank you for the gift. I thank you for the, the gross, horrible, messy Friday Jesus went through so that we could be here tonight declaring our cherishing of the old rugged cross and declaring that we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and even the word of our own testimony. Thank you for those saved tonight. Eternity is in the balance and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now I want to ask you if you would to stand with me. We're going to go into the sacraments. I want to invite you that if, uh, uh, matter of fact, Melanie's going to join me we're going to do this as a family, and if, you're, if you have family here and you want to be a part of this together, I'll literally give you a moment to shuffle. You, you don't have to, but if you want to be together, that's fantastic. Our children that are here are encouraged to participate, and we would ask parents that you help them and, and assist them. This is something we are mandated to do. Few people know that Thursday, especially in, in very uh, regimented religions of Christianity, call it Monday Thursday, which is actually from the Latin, which would mean mandate Thursday. And the mandate has been, of course, remembering the Lord's Supper, but we've adjusted, and you're welcome. Originally, the mandate was wash feet so on Monday Thursday the church family would gather together and wash one another's feet because that's what Jesus did when the disciples walked in think about it now in sandals traveling the same streets that the livestock traveled they didn't have emissions control and things like we have today. They, the streets were messy. And the lowest task in the room was the washing of feet. And the borrower 
when he realized he was the most powerful person in the room, took a towel, got on his feet, on his knees, and washed the feet of the disciples. We've adjusted to say, rather than remember him that way, and again, you're welcome. We do it through the sacraments. Bread, the fruit of the vine, to remember what he did for us. Everyone is welcome to this table. If you're here tonight, you are welcome to this table. If you're questioning and if you're carrying something in your mind, maybe from church experience in the past about whether or not you're worthy, let me express to you, you're not. None of us are. It is the gift of salvation. It is the gift of God. Our encouragement, as Scripture said, is that we don't do this and enter into it lightly meaning we appreciate what it rec- represents and we, we understand that this is bread and this is grape juice but it is symbolic of his body broken for me his blood shed for me we do not do this because we are righteous and sin free we do this because he was righteous and sin free We're using, if you've been a part of grace, we're using different sacraments tonight. Just real candidly, since it's family here, it looked really good in the pictures and we thought it would have a little more of a formality to it. will turn it so that the bread is on top you're welcome Pastor Keith and all of plant management I'm reading from Matthew 26 the disciples had gathered with Jesus all 12 his betrayers in the room he knows it he knows he's a dead man walking but he knows it's to fulfill the Father's plan. And in Matthew 26, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it, for this is my body. I want you to take the bread, and if you will, hold it. And Father, mother, if you've got your children with you, help them with this. And I want you to understand that the Bibles we have are translated into our language, but in the original text, the phrase, this is my body, cannot be stated. It was translators trying to make it translatable in the original what Jesus said is take this bread eat it this is me I want to ask you if you would maybe you stand with me we need the body you and I need the lamb in our home in our lives in our legacy of our children We need this. Would you take the body of Christ, the bread? Thank you, Jesus, for the breaking of your body. For the wounds, the scars, the mockery, the plucking of your beard all that you went through physically broken for me 
And I want to ask you to take this and turn it the other way. And he took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God for it. And he said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. He launched his ministry with wine. He wrapped up his ministry being the wine. Jesus said, in fact, mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to come a day that we will toast the toast of the town and we will drink new wine with Jesus in the presence of the Father. But in the meantime, we do this to remember him. Would you take the drink? Jesus wasn't done there because verse 30 says, Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Before we go out, I want us to join with our worship team and let's do what Jesus did. They ate of the broken bread, they drank of the fruit of the vine, and then they sang. Would you worship with us together?